In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the idea of plant functional traits and how these are useful in ecology for understanding why plants grow where they do. Traditionally, botanists have grouped species together by how they're related in their phylogeny. So, grouping related genera together into families and different families into orders. But in many instances, some species within a genera are functionally very different and that they play very different roles in their respective communities. For example, Grevillea australis within the family Proteaceae is a short, shrubby plant and grows in the alpine regions of South Eastern Australia. Whereas Grevillea baileyana is a tree that can grow to 30 metres and it's found in the tropical rainforests of North East Queensland and Papua New Guinea. So in a functional sense, these two species are very different as they use resources differently and have different environmental requirements, although they're very closely related. As well as being used to group species, morphological functional traits capture fundamental trade-offs that determine species' ecological roles. A trade-off a species makes between the number of seeds produced and the size of each individual seed is a really good example. So, larger seeds can provide seedlings with extra resources, allowing them to succeed where competition is intense or where soil resources are scarce. But often large seeds can only be produced in small numbers. In contrast, tiny seeds may fail where competition is high or where soil resources are low. But tiny seeds can be produced in copious numbers that increase the chance of dispersing to favourable sites with the right conditions. And so seed size is an easily measured functional trait that's likely to provide insight into the relative dispersal and competitive abilities of different plant species. There's lots of other key functional traits that provide similar ecological insights. Competitive ability can be inferred from plant height and size. Photosynthetic efficiency from leaf nitrogen concentrations. Defence against herbivores through wood density and leaf toughness. Leaf traits in particular can infer a whole suite of ecological functions, especially those to do with productivity and light capture. And that's what we'll focus on in the laboratory. Some important leaf traits that you might want to measure might include leaf area, or leaf weight, or specific leaf area, SLA. SLA is the ratio of the one-sided area of a fresh leaf to its oven dry mass. And so SLA represents fitness trade-offs being made by the species and reflects the expected rate of return on previously captured resources such as light and nutrients, and investments such as structural adaptations and herbivore defences. Low SLA values correspond to relatively high investments in defences to harsh conditions and includes long lifespans um, and structural adaptations compared to high SLA values um, which tend to indicate a live fast, die young strategy often seen in annual plants that are soft and flimsy and aren't built to last more than six months or so. Today I'm going to estimate specific leaf area of three different species. So I've got a gum leaf here. This is uh, Eucalyptus radiata, the narrow leaf peppermint. I've got a monocot. Uh, this is Dianella revoluta, the flax lily. Also got Atroplex, a salt bush from down in Altona. And this is Illyria argophylla, um, sort of a large leaf species that grows in wet sclerophyll forests around Melbourne. I've already measured each leaf's fresh weight and they're here in this table. But now it's time to measure their leaf area. And for that, I'm going to use a computer program and a scanner. So now I've weighed and scanned all the leaves. They go into a paper bag and into the oven at 60 degrees for a couple of days. And then I'll re-weigh them when they're dry. So the plants have been in the oven for two days at 60 degrees now. It's time to get them out and re-weigh them. So in terms of SLA for these four species, uh, looks like Dianella here is the lowest. So we can expect Dianella leaves to last a really long time, be really well protected, they're stiff and hard, so that makes sense. So 
Same with the eucalyptus leaf, a really low SLA for the eucalyptus leaf. And we also know eucalypt leaves are well defended in terms of structural adaptations as well as herbivore defences. Uh, the atroplex leaf had a really, really high uh, SLA, um, which is also indicative of leaves that don't last very long, being soft and flimsy, and it kind of was, and now it's a shriveled up uh, little thing. And of course, the Illyria was a big kind of, big kind of leaf that now um, shows a relatively higher SLA compared to the eucalypt and the dianella. Um, but obviously not quite as high as atroplex. And so that's indicative of its environment as well. It grows in those sort of wet sclerophyll forests. Okay, so we've shown how SLA can uh, influence and determine uh, the sorts of uh, attributes that we expect from leaves in different environments.